um, the, the chairperson and the vice chairperson, and that it has that it's indeed time to to elect them. That uh, colleague Maggie um, um, has served now, um, in fact, more than two because of circumstances, more than two terms as president. Uh, so, or as chairperson, so um, <clears throat> she she um, uh, cannot be elected again. Uh, that Nathan is still available after he's now served one one uh, uh, term. But we completely <clears throat> forgot about the ED, about myself, uh, colleagues. I have indeed been serving now for th uh, three or four years uh, without being re-elected. So thank you very much for the vote of con for the silent vote of confidence. And I hope that uh, you weren't disappointed, disappointed in me, but indeed a new ED needs to be um, elected today. Now you will remember, for those of you who've been part of NetAct for, for quite a while, you will remember that in the beginning when NetAct was a, was a small uh, 15 uh, institution uh, uh, network that the ED that the work of the ED that, uh, that Jurgens did for, for many, many years was, uh, was, was considerably less than it is currently. You can imagine that with, with the growth uh, um, in, in the, let me call it the new dispensation of NET Act, with the growth from 15 to 55 members, that the amount of work involved for the ED, uh, in fact, for the, for the whole executive has increased tremendously. And that's why we also have the system of the project coordinator so that there can be some diversification within, within the executive and that some of the duties that traditionally resorted, everything resorted under the, the um, executive director could be delegated also to other members on the executive uh, 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 committee. Now, uh, for, the, for the past couple of years, it worked quite well between myself and Jürgens. Jürgens retired, as you will remember, some time ago, and that made, him in, uh, uh, that made it impossible for him to continue as um, executive director, and he also requested it. He wanted his responsibilities to be lessened, although his work did, not, <laughs> did indeed not, not uh, uh, lessen to any uh, um, extent. And uh, we are, of course, immensely grateful and I have been praying for his for his health and his wealth to continue so that he can keep on serving in this capacity as long as possible but colleagues um, I do also understand his request that um, th th that at some stage he wants to step back uh, completely and only be there in in I mean Obviously, he will always be part of NET Act. Um, he was one of the founders of NET Act, and uh, will always have a special place in our in in, in our uh, in, in our meetings and um, in in our history. But he wants to step back towards the end of the year, and uh, then we will have to. And we are now faced with a situation where we will have to uh, very clearly rethink the. Uh, who, who's doing what within, within NET Act? Um, as I said, the, 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 the responsibilities and the work has increased to such an extent that, that, that running the network has almost become a, a permanent job. So um, what, I, what I wish to ask is um, th that we um, think together ab ab about the, the possibilities. Uh, we have... Um, in, uh, over the past couple of years, you've all come to know Nico Mostert, uh, who is a colleague that was absolutely God sent at a stage when, when Jürgens also, when, when the amount of work that Jürgens had to do uh, became uh, um, increased to such a, agree, a degree that it was actually uh, difficult for him to, to get to everything and also to have a semblance of a retirement. So Nico came on board and uh, he, he, he came, you came to know Nico. Uh, in NET Act, he's become a friend of all of us. Um, he's contributed to the work of NET Act and to the work of the executive director, director uh, direct executive committee, uh, in a in an amazing uh, number of ways. Especially because he is also directly connected with many of our church partners, because he. Um, um, is now in, in the post at the DRC Synod of the Free State where this is in fact what he does, is that he does networking also on behalf of the church. 
uh, with with African uh, partner uh, churches, uh, uh, and and mostly in the reform tradition, but also yeah, further. Right. Now, um, I um, I would uh, uh, ask you colleagues that we seriously consider, and this is a proposal I want to make to the board today, is that I wish to please step back as executive director. My task at the faculty exactly. has also increased to, to, to uh, um, uh, to the degree that it, it also becomes more difficult for me to do my duties um, effectively as executive director. I will still remain part of the NetAct team uh, since Stellenbosch University is, is a member, uh, since one of our offices will always remain, remain at, um, at Stellenbosch University, it, is it, in, it is in fact my office which also acts as the, yeah. uh, the NetAct office. But, um, but, but that the, the, the hat and the title of the, of the um, executive director be given to someone else. And I want to, uh, 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 I want to nominate in this regard, Niku. Uh, Niku has, as I said, he's, he's been working extremely closely with, with, uh, uh, with Jürgens for more than a year now. He understands the, the network. He knows how, how it's done. Uh, how how the challenges of of getting funding, the, all the challenges that running such a network uh, uh, um, entails, and I, I truly believe he is he is the perfect person to take us further now that Jürgens has to step step away. Uh, I I simply cannot do all the administrative stuff uh, uh, um, as well with with my current position at the university, and one needs someone. That that uh, that can do both. That has uh, that has his or her fingers on all the buttons regarding uh, regarding NET Act, but that can also make decisions as an executive director on behalf of NET Act when it's necessary and when, especially when when, when times of the essence. So um, with with that, um, I I uh, respectfully and with a. With, with, with a lot of gratitude toward our members, uh, uh, would, would uh, uh, please submit my resignation as, as um, executive director. Um, as I said, I will be part of the board still um, by Stellenbosch University. My office will still be one of the, uh, the, the um, NetAct offices. And I will still serve um, um, if, if, um, if the, the, e, the, the, the executive committee agrees, I will still serve on the executive committee uh, as a, as a project uh, um, coordinator for, for publications and research, that is where, where my strengths lie, and that is what I've been, uh, th that has been the, the most important contributions that I have made also as executive director to, to, the, to the functioning and future of, of NETAC. So um, uh, uh, this I, <laughs> I, I needed to remind you yesterday of when we spoke of the, the, con the Constitution and the changes that needs to be made to the to the Constitution. When I to the to the part on the on the office bearers and the officials of the of, of the committee, but I got so caught up with the regional offices and the regional office coordinators that it completely slipped my mind. So I'm very and and as as Jochen said, he also forgot to remind me of that. So, Madam Chair, um, I um, uh, I therefore formally um, request that. Um, that that the committee please um, uh, that that the, that the board please uh, um, uh, respect my my uh, uh, my uh, uh, decision to resign um, at this stage as executive director and would also at the same time nominate uh, uh, Dr. Nico Mostert as my successor uh, and I. I, I wish the the, uh, the board to decide on that because this is unfortunately this is something that needs to be done at a, at an AGM where the where as most as possible of, of our members are present and because they will have to vote on whether such such a thing will be will be possible thank you um Jürgens, I don't know whether you want to say anything um, uh, we've talked and we've discussed this with also with Nico uh, and uh, colleagues, um, I'm very glad to say that he accepted um, uh, the, the nomination and he also sees his way open to do this as this 
also will, will link very well with what he currently does. Uh, we do not have the funds to, to, to um, appoint or support financially a permanent executive director. So someone who is in a position uh, who has knowledge and experience of this kind of networking would be an excellent choice. So um, Jurgens, if there's anything you want to add. Yeah, uh, uh, Lady Chair, I can just say that at the first meeting of um, NetAC was in Lusaka mm -hmm. and uh, in 2000. And at that stage, there was a young Dutch Reformed Church pastor pastoring a congregation in Lusaka, and he was called Domini Nico Moster. And so it came that he attended the first uh, and the second meetings of of uh, NetAC uh, uh, in, in his capacity of a, uh, as a local pastor. So he knows NetAC from the very beginning. And I think it is to his advantage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Len, for that. Over to you. Do you want to say something, Nico? No, I'm just handing all everything over to you, Chair. Yes, so thank you very much. I want to open this for comments or questions, but the proposal uh, ahead of us is that our uh, Len is stepping down. His term is over as ED. We need to appoint another ED and the proposal is Nico who has been in the office, but in a different capacity. Now it's up to the board. Let's uh, have a conversation on this. Uh, Sunday, Chair? Yes, Sunday. Professor Sandek, go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, we have had the presentation of Len and the support from um, Johan. All of us perhaps have watched carefully since we asked Nico to take the position he's taken. He has, for me, done very well. And I believe he is very, very capable to be the ED of NetAct. For that reason, first of all, I want us to approve, accept Len's application to step down. And I want us to concur and endorse the nomination of Nico because Nico will take us forward with what we have seen happening in NetArc and the way NetArc has become, his other op opportunities to work with other churches in the region, in his region, those experiences he has with he did a lot to us. So I concord and I want to submit my support for Len's resignation and for uh, the nomination of Nico. Thank you very much, Professor Sande. We have uh, a proposal to allow Len's resignation. Any second? Please just uh, state your name if you second that uh, motion. We have in the, in Silas, the chat, I think Silas, we've got two. Silas? Silas uh, from the Reformed Institute of Theology of Training in Kenya. And I wanted to second uh, what uh, Professor Sunday has said and also uh, support and accept uh, uh, is it the resignation of land with a lot of uh, profound also thanks for the work that he has done. Uh, we've benefited from that, uh, not only uh, he's uh, uh, writing and editing and other things, but he's been reaching out to most of the institutions in terms of even letting us know what's happening and uh, doing the work very effectively. Having said that, I've also interacted with uh, Nico uh, in this forum, in this network and also other networks. And he's a very energetic, able person. And I want to second the proposal that he becomes uh, uh, he steps in in the shoes. I second. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other thoughts or views? We have 
second, secondment to the motion. Um, so the Madam. motion has been carried that uh, we allow rain to, reside, to, to step down. And then the next proposal is uh, for Nico to step in as the ED. Maybe just to mention to our new members, our net act situation is that currently our headquarters is in South Africa, Stellenbosch, South Africa, currently. But uh, in order for us to have someone in the office, for now, we need someone who is a South African because as a network, we don't have the capacity to bring in someone from another country and pay them. So far, we have been depending on volunteers. We have been depending on people who have been working with other institutions, uh, other investors or the church, and then they give us part of their time and they do the net act work. So I just wanted to emphasize that as now we, we look at the proposal of allowing, allowing Nico to step up as the ED, as our new ED. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's indeed a very important consideration. Thank you. Do we have a motion to allow Nico to step up as the ED? Can someone propose the motion, please? Uh, uh, Chair, I think we've got proposal and second on the chart on the text from. Okay. Yes, I've seen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So the second motion has been proposed. And uh, do we have seconders? Yes, uh, Reverend Zachariah from Lesotho and mm -hmm. Dr. Soko from Lusaka. Thank you very much. Do we have to continue to vote on this or this has been passed because the body has endorsed it? Madam Chair, if there are no objections, then we will take it as a vote that has been uh, cast um, with a with a majority approval because there has yes, been no. Thank you um, very much, no <laughs> Professor Henry. As you take the minutes, take note of that. Congratulations, Nico. We praise God for your availability. We know that most of the work you do, you do on a voluntary basis. But for the network to continue to grow, we depend on your time and the support that the church gives you. Thank you very much. We we'll now move on. We'll move on to the rest of the, the agenda for today, unless someone wants to say something before I, I move on. Uh, Madam Chair, can I just say a very personal thank you to Len for a couple of things. One, he has been unfailingly supportive of me since I arrived at NetAct as a stranger in a strange land. But two, something that he didn't talk about, but that we have really benefited from is Len's legal knowledge and training. And I hope that we're not going to lose that, that any time mm -hmm. the Constitution needs another redraft, I hope that we can ask Len if he would kindly give us his time and his expertise. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Len. You have heard that. We we'll definitely require your expertise. We expect you to support Nico in the office and support all of us as in that. And I just want to echo Fraser and say thank you very much for the time, the energy, the effort you have put in this network. As it continues to grow, we continue to seek your skills, your advice, and your insight. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair. It has been a labor of love, indeed. <laughs> Just a question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes. Does it mean mm -hmm. that Nuku, Nuku, will you still cons will you still continue as project coordinator, or have we created a vacancy? Are you going to combine the two jobs into one, or are you going to get someone to help you to do what you were doing? Because you you were three you were three people plus Jurgens, and now you're going to be two people. Or am I missing something? Um, not yes. two, one. one. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Roland. It's a good question. Um, uh, I think with, we will sit together with the new executive um, to, uh, to see a way forward. There is some of the responsibilities which Jurgens will still continue to do. Uh, he's not going to be much active anymore. Uh, I will take over most of the stuff which we've been doing this year. 
so Jürgens will will remain. We are still between him and myself are still dividing some of the um, some of the responsibilities, and then we will have a meeting with once we have set up the regional groups and regional leaders. We need to look at the projects again and see what are the projects that's coming up. Um, uh, because currently my project was the office. Um, so we would have to see if that still is going to be a, a project or, is, or if that is moving to the ED's um, responsibilities. But uh, Roland, we will keep all of you informed on that one. Um, we, will plan, we will plan this with the new executive and then uh, give feedback on that. Maybe, Nico, I can add on to that, that uh, in the same way that here at Stellenbosch, Letak has an office. Officially, it is Len's office. <laughs> uh, but he's so kind, he, you know, he prefers working in the, uh, on the street corner uh, at, the, at the cafe and, and on his, his laptop. So uh, we, were, we are really privileged to have this wonderful big office uh, at our disposal for NetAct. But in the same way the Dutch Reform Church in the Free State um, uh, appointed Nico in such a way that they made room uh, for his activities in NetAct. He is allowed officially to work in NetAct and his office and his secretary is also available to support him in his work in NetAct. Now that is as good a bargain as you can get uh, for this network. And, and I think somehow Niku, uh, someone uh, from NetAct need to thank your Senate and the church for what they are doing on, uh, on behalf of this African network. Thank you. As, as need be, um, Cherry, if I can just reply, as need be, um, coming back to Roland's question, um, as need be, we would have to relook at that. But if you can just give us a little bit of time to, to sort out the, 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 the future, um, it's not a crystal ball, but just some organizational stuff which we need to sort out, um, we will let you know on that. Chair. If there's no more questions, we will be at page six. You can take us from there. We are in our agenda on page six. That is the Net Act Internet Portal Report. Yes. Can I ask if Fraser to lead us in this conversation, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, hello, everybody. It's good to see everybody here. Um, yes, this is the... Um, this is the bit that uh, I have to actually stop administering this meeting and let Nico take over that bit so that I can talk coherently about the, the portal for a few minutes. Um, you've all seen the report. I don't want to say too much about it, um, but uh, hopefully if any of you have questions, you'll be feel free to ask questions after I've spoken. I just want to highlight two things or a couple of things. One is the online learning platform. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen with everybody. Okay, so you should all now see this is one aspect of the online learning platform. It is our online teaching tool where we can create courses which um, partners can um, can use or we, if you have the skills in your own partner, um, then we can make the space available and you can build your own courses on this. You'll see that we're also using it as a platform for the AGM if, if anybody wants to, to, to join in. I don't know how many of you actually joined in going on to the, the link through the portal this morning or how many of you just joined in with the direct Zoom link that you set. But you see that we've also created forums where you can have a keep your discussion online if you want to, to have a discussion. Let me just have a quick refresh and see. I have been refreshing this quite often during the 
during the day, but it looks as if nobody is actually um, taking the discussion offline, as it were, but that's fine. It's a, it's a resource and you're welcome to, to use it or not. It's, I know it can be awkward, especially for those of you who are connecting on your mobile phone to try and keep different platforms going at the same time. But just to, to highlight that this resource is available and to stress again with this and with all the aspects of the portal, your librarians have all had at least some training or some exposure to it. So please involve your librarians in your discussions. When you're deciding, is this something we can do, we, we should do ourselves? Is this something we should do in connection with NetAct? Speak to your librarians or speak to me about how NetAct can help. Just a couple of things. One of the big positives of the way the portal is set up is that everything is open source. Now that means that we didn't have to pay anything for it, but it also means that we can copy it to any of the partners if you want. So for example, if you are sitting where you have your own local server, but poor internet access, we can create a copy of the portal on your server so that your students can, can access your copy while, you're, while, while they're on, on campus with you. So even though you may not be able to offer internet, you know, I know it's expensive, and I know some of you are in lo remote locations where it's not always available, but you can, we're quite, I'm quite happy to sit with you, either the whole portal or an as one aspect of it. For example, I know some of you are creating your own um, versions of the library, the library catalog. Some of you like, like Jets or, or Nets are using the, the online version that, that um, NetAct have. But if you are not in a position to go online, then it's very straightforward. Well, once COVID is over and I can travel to, to, to your location, it's very straightforward to set it up for me to, to set up a copy at your own location. Currently, we can do what we can do with Zoom calls with your staff like this, but it will be, it will be more straightforward when I can get on a plane again. So that's one, one aspect. Um, let me just... Uh, find the right tab as well. So this is another one that we, I want to really stress. Hopefully you've all been made aware of the Protestant Theological University in the Netherlands and their new African Theology Worldwide site, which is aimed at making African scholarship available to the world. We also have something that will do the same we have, a NetAct digital repository where partners, if you want, can create your own space on here and you can put up whatever um, art, um, articles or theses or dissertations that you want. Commonly, it would be somewhere that you would make your students' master's thesis, your students' doctoral theses, and if any of your staff are currently working on their doctorates or their masters at the moment, this would also be a place where you could make these available online. Now that's a, a formal repository. It's using fairly complicated software and there's a fairly steep learning curve in using it because you have to get all the technicalities absolutely right. So instead, Sorry. Unfortunately, the little um, zoom bar is right on top of the tab I want to click on. So this is going to take a second. There we go. So instead, as well, we also have an informal repository. All your librarians have been made aware of this. It's very straightforward. Any material that you want to make available without going through all the, the steps and jumping through all the loops of the um, of a formal repository, you can just put um, pass it to me, and it go it will go up here. So, for example, this is where I put the um, copies of 
this meeting's programme and the annual report and a guide to, to getting online and so on, which I sent you a link. So, so this is a, a very easy, quick way to make your scholarship or any resources that you want to put online available. We talked um, fairly recently, we set up the NetAct Facebook page. So I won't say anything more about that, but just to get also to, to stress that NetAct also has uh, a YouTube channel. Um, so we streamed yesterday's meeting online and then last night I converted it into properly um, formatted videos. So the videos from, from yesterday are available if anybody wants to catch up or any of any people, anybody in your institutions who wanted to attend yesterday but couldn't can catch up. And you see that um, I am streaming here as well. Um, so today, anybody who wants can, can follow along on YouTube. But before we move to questions, and I'm aware that yes, I'm not, I'm only touching on a few things. So hopefully you will have lots of questions. But I, I want to talk about the NetAct Journal. This has been why I've been sort of a little bit in the background this morning and at the start of this meeting, because we were just getting together the final articles for the new for, for the new edition of the journal um, this morning. But it's now here, it's now online, and since we have both the executive editor and the editor in chief in this meeting in the persons of Gideon van der Watt and Sandy Gang. I'm going to ask permission if I can click the publish button uh, and, and put the, the new second edition of our NetAct Journal live right here, right now. Gentlemen, do I have your permission? Sunday, Gideon? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Gideon, you are Amazing in the meeting. Amazing sense of occasion. Wonderful. Congratulations, colleagues. Thank okay. you. Okay, we'll take a second. Um, I should say, I, 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 as it comes online, we have this, th th this issue has articles from South Africa, from Nigeria, from Kenya, and from Botswana. So I think that's a probably possibly a new um, development that we are now um, getting articles that we're publishing from out with the NetAct family. But that's, uh, it's all, it's all good. It's all extension. It's a big issue this time. There's 200 pages, which is why it's taking a few minutes to, um, to, to publish. But as soon as the, um, as the server catches up with itself, it will be live uh, and available for anybody who wants to see it. Um, and actually, he will be formally thanked when we do a report on the journal later, but I also want to put my, add my personal thanks at this point to Hidian, who has worked tirelessly over the last few weeks to, to get all these articles together, to get reports in from the peer reviewers, to, to chase up late reports, to chase up late, to chase up late everything I have to say, so, so, so thank you. Yes, and I concur. Gideon has been wonderful, such a gift to us. Okay, so are there any questions at this point? Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the articles, uh, the, the final makeup on, on, on uh, the uh, PDF, there will have to be some minor changes and, and a little bit of layout, but thank you also to, to Fraser for, for his knowledge and, and, and uh, pressure putting on me all the time. Thank you. 
<laughs> uh, Chair, if there's any remarks, any questions for Fraser? Yeah, there's a hand. Yeah, there's a hand. Godwin. Itukuma. Godwin. Miss that one. Godwin, thank you. Yes, good day. I have two questions. Number one is concerning the portal. That is the NetArt internet portal. Um, the first question is, how can we register as a school and link our website? Because we would like to link our website to NetArt internet portal for resources, for us to be able to scoop resources for our students and staff. That is number one question. The number two concerning the NetArt journals, and we discover that in South Africa and other countries all over the world, journals are registered. And if such journal is not registered, it is not always accepted. And my question is, as NetArt journal register, or are you in the process of doing that? Um, thank you. Okay, let, let, let me answer your first question in terms of getting access to the portal. If you can send me a list of login details for your staff and your students, then I will add you as users to the portal and you'll be able to, to access everything that, that's on it. You can choose, you can either send me details along the lines of, you know, first name, second name, and I'll create your users like that. Or if that's too much, then you can just ask me to create a list of users. So for example, it would be um, ETSI 0001, ETSI 0002, um, I, 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 and so on. That, 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 that's your choice. But um, access to the license part of the portal where, we, where we're putting up um, resources that um, NetAct is getting hold of that aren't freely available, that has to be by login and password. So we need to know your details so that we can um, create logins and user details for, for everybody to access that. Um, on the journal, that I will I suggest that, that we keep that question pinned and that can come up at the there's a there's going to be a discussion on the journal later today. Madam Chair, because uh, I, I can't actually answer that question. Thank you. Any more questions, colleagues? Uh, very Kamadi briefly. Joseph has raised her hand. Uh, okay, can I ask a question? Yes, yes please, go ahead. Okay, uh, I looked at the document where Fraser uh, posted uh, some few links uh, uh, about the activities that one can do on the uh, net, net app internet portal. So I was just uh, maybe thinking, uh, do we have only one link that can uh, lead us to all those activities that one can do, like the uh, one that he has demonstrated today? Yes, um, there is a. I've 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 created a a very simple website. Uh, let me share my screen. I'm not sure if I've actually um, got it, but I can I can try. Which screen am I trying to share? Sorry. Yeah. So the web address is hub, that's h-u-b dot netact dot org dot z-a. So that's got a link to the main netact website and it's got a link to all the resources. It's got a link to communication tools. It's got a link to the virtual learning environment and so on. So, so yes, hub.netact.org.za will, will take you to all the different um, elements that make up the portal. Okay. Then I have the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, the second question, 
Uh, initially, uh, if I remember well, uh, we were told that now when the uh, uh, internet portal has been established, uh, it will be linked with uh, a lot of uh, uh, African libraries in uh, several countries in Africa, like uh, those theological institutions that are members of NetEx. So my question is, uh, uh, is it done or is still yet to be done? Uh, that, that is still yet to be done. Um, the, <laughs> there, there's a, what you would call a, a sort of um, ongoing process between um, getting institutions trained in using the portal and um, adding, the, add, adding resources um, to it. So, so, so the, the, these two are sort of... Um, fairly um, two, two, two sides of the same coin. And I have to confess, um, take up of the portal has been slower than I hoped. And partly that's because of, of COVID and it's not been possible to do good training events to, to properly expose the colleges to, to, to everything that the portal can do. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that is still ongoing. Okay, thank you. Um, Chair, if I can just come in here to answer uh, maybe on Joseph's question. It's a very good question because this, together with what um, Fraser has mentioned, there's two other problems as well. The one is, is that um, we, we've created the portal, but the, we need the information also from our institutions to go to, to Fraser. And sometimes we see that our institutions are not really quite responding that quickly to give us that information. So if you guys in our institutions has got stuff that needs to go onto the internet portal, you need to provide that for us. The second one is just on the repositories. It is that in most cases, a lot of our institutions, the repositories is in a small little room at the back of your institution with a lot of theses lying there and they're all hard copies. Now they need to be digitalized. They need to be put into a PDF form, which is traceable and readable, so that it can be uploaded. So we would like to encourage all of you um, that you start having a conversation with your library. We've, we've had a, a lot of effort and time spent on the portal, but the portal's future is partly from the, from the central hub, which um, Fraser is, is, is creating. But it also depends a lot on what the librarians and your institutions upload onto the portal. That's how we share the knowledge. That's how we collaborate with one another. Um, so I would like to encourage all of you to have a conversation with your librarians because they, have, they are the ones that has been, been gone through the whole process of being, um, being helped. Uh, they are the ones that attended also our training sessions, which we had in 2019. So it's, 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 it's paramount that you have a conversation with your, um, that you have a conversation with your, um, with your librarians. What Joseph is asking is an extremely relevant question. Um, that, but that answer, like I say, is linked to how you as institutions interact Librarians interact with the Net Act Internet Portal and then with Fraser. Thank you, Chair. Um, Fraser, if I could just ask you, will you put up that hub link just in the chat box? Yeah, no problem. Colleagues, the hub, that hub which he showed will be in the chat box. Um, you can then click on the hub and then it will open up in your, in your portal. Thank you, Chair. If there's no any other questions, we can move on. Um, Chair, are you still connected there? Nico, maybe we can just mention that the Oxford Center for Religion and Public Life uh, made a promise that uh, they will send in teams to help us, uh, the bigger libraries of our um, NetAct schools, to um, scan 
the master and doctoral degrees and other important uh, documentation that are all over Africa in libraries. They are willing to pay for all the expenses to screen, uh, to uh, sort of copy yeah. all of that and then uh, uh, have it available as repositories. Mm. We were simply from the officer's side overwhelmed with too much work to do follow up on this, partly because of the COVID situation, but it's, uh, it's actually a wonderful offer. Yeah, again, thank you, Jurgens. Again, colleagues, that resides with, with, with the institutions um, so that you have that conversation between the institutions and your, your librarians and see how you can start making the internet to work um, for you and for your institution. And then let the librarians then communicate with, um, with, with Fraser. It is also important that uh, I've been sitting in a couple of meetings over the past couple of months um, on theological education in Africa. Many of you have attended that same meetings with me. One of the things which is becoming also paramount in Africa is, is the quality of our research. So if we, uh, um, and that links on with Godwin's question on the, on the, um, on what we are doing in, in terms of the internet, of the, the journal as well. What, what I see when I look at specifically, um, when I look at the public, uh, the articles that were, that passed on my office or on my desk, I see that our resources, which we are using, um, um, at the end in our literature lists are very limited in, and we are also we keep on using the same type of, of references we are referencing the same people and the same scholars it's, it's paramount that we will start creating a, a larger pool of places to reference scholars that we reference and specifically research being done in Africa because I think what the world is needing is, is the world is needing authentic African research, because we need to put that out there, but then it needs to be authentic research and it needs to be very credible research. Um, and, and in order for us to, to compete there, we need to provide good literature lists, uh, good referencing, and also we need to work very hard. And that's something which we would need to look into in the future, which is the whole thing of plagiarism. Um, because most, most of our institutions do publish internally, but they've got no way to check whether how much is the plagiarism. And then the moment that publication becomes public and people put it in through something like turn it in, it turns out that a large amount of the content was then plagiarized. And, and the problem with that is, is that inherently, uh, immediately puts our research into a doubt. Uh, and pe people say we can't trust the research because there's too much plagiarism in. So you understand that we need to work on this. Um, and as we built the, the, the portal, we can go and, and, and source the more people that are using it, we can go to other people and ask, will you help us in order, say for instance, to have a turn it in a module or something similar to that, but that's it's a lot of money. But if we can sort of develop the portal and make it accessible, then we, we have a leverage to to, to press some arm with people to say, help us to get plagiarism um, software in so that we can help our institutions to put better research out there. Thank you, Chair. That's just um, a remark from my side. Nicole, can, yes, can I come in? Yes. Uh, uh, just to add to what you just said uh, just now, uh, my experience, um, with a number of uh, publications uh, uh, that I'm assisting. One is the, the, uh, the publication on disability, uh, theological perspectives on disability in Africa that Tier Fund is working on. And, and also uh, uh, the presentations that we got last year uh, during our uh, uh, webinars, especially around transformational theology and theological education. Um, uh, I'm really impressed with uh, uh, the uh, with uh, with the the theological thinking, even uh, amongst those with master's degrees, uh, 
or on the master's degree level, um, uh, which I hope we can encourage more of. So uh, quite often those with doctorate degrees in Africa might have experience in some way of publication, but I hope that we can uh, provide a greater platform for those with with master's uh, deg degree level who are uh, deeply thinking about theological issues uh, to provide some kind of uh, uh, of a platform for them to share uh, their ideas, uh, their perspectives, uh, etc. Uh, without lowering the quality of uh, the publication, I just wonder to whether uh, it is possible to help those uh, people, uh, those uh, theological leaders, uh, faculty, and uh, and others. Uh, uh, to improve, uh, to, uh, to share uh, their perspectives, but improve their writing uh, in, in particular. Uh, I think there is a, um, there's a serious challenge that, uh, that we have been uh, picking up then uh, with a publication on disability. Uh, so helping, uh, I, th I think there is less of an issue with those uh, with doctorate degrees, but uh, on a master's level, I think uh, we, we must find a way to help emerging scholars, so to speak, uh, to publish. Uh, Chair, if I may answer. Um, uh, thank you, Sas. I think what we will later on, we will be coming to the writers retreat, which uh, we did one in 2019, and we hope to do one again this year. That's one of the platforms. And then the other one, which I will also be reporting on later, is uh, together with Sunday, is and and the overseas council the whole thing of research in Africa, to get that hard going in terms of improving the research. But yes, part of that is the writing skills, and specifically for upcoming scholars, um, and and you start your scholarship in my view from a, from a master's degree level, when you start writing from there. Um, but maybe. Chair, if I can just come in here again, what I'm also picking up in, 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 in many of the forums that, that I attend is, is I think we need to, we would need to be vigilant even when we start giving assignments to students on this. What SAS is saying is extremely important because we need to start, yes, master's degree is when you sort of start your scholarship, but improving your writing skills starts when you do assignments uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on an undergraduate level. Um, so, and that's the, in my view, that is sort of where the faculty comes in and the academic deans comes in, which should really be, be checking that standard of writing and helping students specifically with writing skills. And I know many of our institutions does not have that, but, you know, uh, in all your countries, and maybe there's another place, a uh, university next door to you, where there is writing people who are in English and whatever writing, get scholars in, that get from other disciplines, people in to help you to improve that. What Sasi is saying is extremely, extremely uh, relevant. Uh, yes, uh, so related to that then, uh, Nico, uh, uh, I, don't, I, don't, um, I don't want to say we need to lower standards. But, but I, I've been really impressed with some of the, the perspectives that came out uh, from our call um, uh, to give presentations on transformational theology and theological education. Uh, so I, I wonder whether it would be of value um, to develop a different kind of publication uh, not to compete with uh, uh, with a journal for, uh, for church and society in Africa, but uh, uh, more kind of a platform. I don't know whether the, the portal uh, could uh, uh, could help with that, but more of a platform for emerging ideas, where uh, emerging where. Uh, scholars even working on their masters could share ideas uh, uh, but also make it known uh, um, outside their uh, local area of engagement uh, i'm not sure how that can work yep. 
but just a platform for people kind of even to pre-publish, so to speak. Plus, if I'm hearing, uh, Cherry, if I may answer again, um, plus if I'm hearing correctly, I think maybe the idea is something like a theological blog where, you know, like a think tank blog type of thing and put ideas out there. Um, yes, um, I'm asking, I'm answering now on behalf of Fraser, but we have spoken about that in the past. Yes, it is possible to do that. We can create a page where people can interact. Um, so that can be done, but we would then really need the, um, the cooperation of everyone to start using that. Um, creating the page is not the issue, but it's, it's participation that we need to, to have. But Fraser, I see you came on there. Do you want to yeah, reply to um, that? Yeah, j j just to, to echo what you said, it, participation is the key. There is nothing sadder than a blog page where the last post was three months ago. And that's why in a lot of institutions that I've been in, I have resisted um, setting up blogs because uh, I have been aware that they wouldn't be carried on. Uh, but yes, if there is a definite um, likelihood that, um, the, that people will contribute and that lots of people will contribute, that it won't just be two or three people keeping it going, then yes, we, we can set up a blog or any sort of um, shared web space like that very straightforwardly. Sunday, I see you. Do you want to reply? Yes. Um, I think from the discussion on uh, African public theology, the sharing of um, the East, you know, the, the Eastern zone, East Africa zone, uh, was very helpful in terms of talking about here is a publication that has come. How can we use this? publication to increase our awareness of what is happening and discuss it. Because those discussions will also become something that will create a community of discussion, a community of conversation. A theme has been created around something. From it, we develop other projects of research in our institution, mentoring opportunities for undergraduate and graduate. All of these things can happen together. I think we need to be more intentional in these things, uh, but some of the challenges we do have now are the workload in institutions. You have you know, one lecturer teaching many subjects and uh, they don't have time for any other thing and all of that. So we, with NetAC, an opportunity is there for us to actually have lectureship sharing, lectureship interaction, so that some of these things that keep people low in research and contribution in community will be able to have more opportunity for that. If we take advantage of NetArt, we can expand this by sharing lectures, lecturers, volunteers to teach courses in other institutions or have courses online that people can benefit from. So that the time they will use to do, just do the planning and preparation, something somebody has taken the time to do for you, you are able to take advantage of that with their understanding. Uh, then we can begin to push for more opportunity to contribute to our society and to contribute to knowledge. We, of course, we're going to talk about you know, research with you later, uh, where we need to go. Uh, we need to go you know, better than what we are doing right now. So I like the discussion. Thank you, Sars, for bringing that up. Here, Maggie. Um... We can move to the next point. I'm not, not too sure. I don't see any hands. I quickly check just to help me. Yes. You see a hand which I missed. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can move to the next uh, agenda item. So yes. our next agenda item for today is, um, is report number three, the yes. NETA office. Yes, and Chair, we are turning then to page eight. Mm -hmm. Colleagues can turn to page eight in their agendas. 
Can you take us through that, Nico? Yes, um, I'm handing over to Jergens. Uh, he will guide us through this one. All colleagues, we are on page eight. Uh, and then I will just liaise who's going to speak next. But next up will be uh, Kubis and Jergens on the financial report. So we are at 3.1. Thank you, Jergens. Dear, dear friends, uh, the NetAC office in Stellenbosch uh, as since in, since its uh, inception in 2000, 2001, used Lens Office. And the university was so good um, to supply this office and the whole university infrastructure. Uh, their systems are uh, free of charge to be used by the NetAC organization uh, for its own benefit. Now, of course, the university is always thankful uh, for organizations like NetAct because it brings students to the university. And I've observed how many students uh, from other faculties are now coming to this university because they are following the sort of path uh, uh, walked by the theological students. We've just received um, six uh, engineering students from Malawi, and they are all staying in Wadenhof House too. Now, that's just to, to sort of illustrate that the uh, university uh, is glad to help us uh, doing all, uh, you know, the financial system, we don't pay phone bills and all of that sort of stuff or internet stuff. It is paid by the university. And then uh, besides that, we have the privilege of having someone that is really good with finances and that is uh, Dr. Kubis Oudendal to guide us in all our accounts. So he will give you, um, uh, uh, explain the, uh, financial position of Net Act uh, from the audited papers that um, the, uh, books that he received or reports that he received from the university. Dr. Kubis wouldn't know. Thank you, uh, Jurgens. Yeah, we've got the report uh, in our uh, at the back of that uh, 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 program. Uh, we might just go there. Uh, page it 20. Is on page 20. Uh, on page 20, it is uh, uh, posted there. Uh, Nico, if can I proceed? Uh, Nico, uh, it's a yes, you, may, yeah. you may proceed. Uh, right. uh, yeah. Uh, on that page 20, the first column is um, the Net Act cost centers and funds available on the 31st of December uh, 2020. That is just the, uh, the balances uh, given there. Uh, it starts with the administration, that's the office uh, and uh, uh, the running uh, of Net Act. And then uh, they uh, uh, followed by the different uh, trust funds for specific projects or purposes. Um, there we've got uh, for the uh, writing retreats, uh, Kinkuni lectures, annual meeting, scholarship, publications, curriculum development, um, uh, re re resonate uh, a global mission workshop. Uh, African Public Theology and Net Act Internet Portal workshops. Uh, Jurgens, you might just explain those last three um, more. But that's the balances as on 2020, 2019, and 2018. And there we can uh, see the different uh, uh, the monies available. Uh, in general, it looks very good. There's, uh, um, uh, from the university side and the auditors, they find our books uh, uh, in order um, and it is well run uh, by the uh, uh, bookkeeping department of the yeah. faculty and the university. Then secondly, you, you've got an explanation 
uh, of uh, the first fund, and that is the Net Act administration. There you've got the Net Act administration as from uh, January 2020 to the end of 2020, with uh, two extra columns of the previous two years. Uh, there you've got the income uh, of a total of 274,700 and the expenditure much less. So uh, the last uh, past year has been favorable for us uh, in terms of uh, surplus. Um, uh, uh, let, let me just see there. Yeah, there's a surplus of 35,000. And that leaves us with the accumulated funds of 350,000. Um, so uh, due to less expenses, due to less traveling and a, a, num uh, a number of other factors due to the COVID pandemic, uh, the income uh, has um, been uh, much bigger than the expenditure and that left us uh, with a surplus. Uh, hopefully, in the next year, we'll get a number of the uh, outstanding projects running again. Uh, Jürgens, that is the, 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 the total report in short. Okay, I will then uh, say something about the points that you mentioned. Resonate a Global Mission, that is the second, the third last cost point in the first section on page 20 is money from the um, Christian Reformed Church in, in the USA. Since our inception in, in 2000, they, they on an annual basis help net act, uh, especially to hold our annual general meetings. Nowadays, we are using the money that they gave, they are giving us to um, fund our journal. So the 5,000 is what was left over for the next year from their donation, but it will go to our journal. Um, then the African, uh, the workshops of the African public theology, you see there's an enormous amount of 439,000 rand available. Now the, that money was um, donated by the Tunnel House Foundation uh, for the regional meetings and to discuss African public theology. That money therefore is available for the regional meetings that we are planning later this year. So it's a, a wonderful to have that available. Then the uh, NETAC internet portal workshops. It's money, uh, we, we, we will have to ask more money for that um, cost point because we need um, Fraser to be able to travel to the different countries and help the libraries, librarians, with all the stuff that he just reported uh, to us. Um, the, one of the important things to understand is why we are in such a very, uh, in such a good financial position is that we are not traveling. Uh, previously, most of our expense, expenses involved the uh, uh, tickets, airline tickets, for instance, and um, accommodation at the different places. Now, um, in 2020, uh, uh, the Barnabas Fund, uh, on our request, paid the membership fees of all our institutions. That um, was in total 13,000 uh, American dollars. And, and that is why our administrative account now has such a positive balance. And we, we, we will, um, Gavin is here, tell the guys, thank you again. <laughs> um, it is still keeping uh, the office, uh, you know, able to pay its expenses. Uh, this year, we decided not to ask uh, our institutions membership fees, except for the four South African faculties of theology, uh, they are subsidized by the government. So they are in a better position. So they are the only four members that paid membership fees this year. And we appreciate that uh, enormously. They, 
they they knew uh, that we are only going to ask them, but nonetheless they were willing to pay for uh, this year. So I guess the rest um, uh, do ask questions between Quivis and me and Nico. We will be able to most probably be able to answer everything. I want to ask one thing, Madam Chair, and that is that. Um, the board unanimously decides to ask the office to thank Barnabas Fund and the Oxford Center for their ample donations in this period when it was very difficult. They helped a lot of theological schools, I think 19 of our schools, just to survive and not to close. And um, then Tyndale House Foundation that helped a lot uh, in specific uh, projects. They will continue to help us with writing the teach and research and the trans and translation of our, our, our important Service documents. Money. Thank you. Baie goed, hoe gaan met jou? Are there any questions to Quibus and Jürgens regarding the finances? Um, maybe just to our new colleagues, just to, um, why, why is the fund, uh, why is the accounts at Stellenbosch University, uh, as Jürgens explained, it's an old relationship, but also many of our donors uh, prefer to give the funds, specifically USA donors, makes it easier because they can donate in the US and Stellenbosch University has got um, uh, an office set up in the US. So that money can go from the US to that office and then to our account, the Net Act account, and Stellenbosch University does that for us for free. So that's why- yeah, the, the US donors then get uh, tax benefits tax, by donating tax. to Net Act. That is yep. a wonderful thing. <laughs> it, helps, yeah. it helps us to, uh, to be an attractive donor, <laughs> uh, a place to, do, to donate to. Any questions, colleagues? If I don't see hands, we might we can move on. Thank you, uh, Jürgens. Um, we move uh, to the next page, and that will be page uh, nine. nine. Yeah, membership fees you've already covered, I think. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, you have to cover that. I did. I did. I, I told how yep. um, it's going to work, and then. We dealt actually, Nico we, and Madam Chair, we dealt with 3.3, the offices. There's nothing new to say about that. The, the last point on that page is the NetAC house, which is called Vadenhof House here in Stellenbosch. It's after the street. It's a place where we receive, um, it was given by the Dutch Reformed Church, the house was donated, and the Hartgering Trust. And it's a home away from home for students studying theology. Um, during this uh, COVID period, more and more students from other no, faculties no, no, no. in Africa no, no, no. is making use of the house. When there's room for them, we say you are welcome. So it's a place where Christians from all over Africa that studies here can meet. Um, and it's a uh, to the university and, and to NetAC itself, it is a very big benefit. Thank you. Any questions? Um, we are moving to 3.5 uh, communication. Uh, Fraser, this was covered actually in your yeah. report. Um, we need to, we can just take note of that. We can add that uh, Kobus Wurdendorf's wife, Marie Hitt, helps us a lot with um, putting, uh, you know, news and whatever other items on our website. So thank you for her too. Yep. Uh, Chair, we can move on to 3.6, lecturer exchange, Jürgens. Um, friends, uh, very few lecturer exchanges took place this year because of COVID. Uh, one went to Silas's um, school in Rit in Kenya. Uh, and, uh, but we realized even with that lecturer exchange that there's always a lot of tension because of the COVID situation. So um, what we are trying to do now is to, to tell um, schools that if you need someone to, to 
help with a specific module or program at your school, ask the NetAC office between Nico and me and Len and others, Sunday and, and uh, Nathan, we will look for someone who can zoom in or use any of those um, internet uh, facilities to give a specific um, training or, or deliver a specific program. And I think, Nico, uh, we will deal with that elsewhere too, but um, uh, uh, programs like Old and New Testament uh, that are very um, specific programs. The NETAC offices are negotiating with Huguenot College to uh, present uh, those uh, uh, Old and New Testament Greek and Hebrew courses that will be available for all our schools. So if you want to teach your students Greek and Hebrew, we will find a uh, a way of getting an accredited course uh, at your um, to be used or at your disposal. Thank you. Yertens uh, three point seven. Scholarships. Um, scholarships is all. <laughs> Let me tell you this story. In the first six years of NetAct's uh, existence, uh, the Hartgering Trust paid all the scholarships for master and doctoral degree students. Uh, so that the first, uh, the number of schools in NetAct, um, the, the um, staff of those schools all got their degrees via the scholarships from the Hartgering Trust. It was a wonderful time. <laughs> After that, it was difficult. We, we've got to sort of help and or look out and see where we can get help. Um, the Langham uh, Publishing House is helping with scholarships. There are other organizations that also help with scholarships. So if you uh, need scholarships or need help uh, as to where to look for scholarships, um, contact the NETAC offices and um, uh, we will help you uh, to, to, to get to a place where, where there's help. But it is important that this sort of looking or, or, or search for scholarships must be done with your promoter or study leader. Thank you, Niku. Sorry. Sorry, Silas, you had your hand up. And then also um, I see um, Sunday's hand, Silas. Yes, thank you. I had my hands up when uh, uh, Jürgens talked about lectures exchange and wanted to really appreciate that work. We had a uh, friend uh, uh, <clears throat> with us here for, she was supposed to stay in Kenya treat for at least a month or five weeks, but due to the challenges caused by the COVID situation, as he mentioned, she had to leave earlier. And the fear you know, calls from family uh, from the media and other things, it made it a little bit uh, uncomfortable for her to stay here longer. So I want to appreciate the support we got from NetAct, from yourself, from Jungens, and even from Karen herself, at the same time, you know, trying to adapt the difficult situation we are living in uh, as it yeah. comes to COVID-19. At the same time, I also want to, uh, to, to appreciate the, the things he has said, where we'll be having perhaps uh, lectures who will be using Zoom. That will be very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Sunday. I, I think on behalf of the rest of our colleagues, we want to thank the NetAct officials for the hard work we are doing on our behalf. Uh, perhaps, you know, we need to encourage ourselves again to see how we can expand what we are doing in, um, in terms of scholarship. We can uh, encourage our institutions to work on research proposals that we can help develop and see how we can help them raise the funding for the research to be done. We can match that with the scholarship. 
if that is done, that will be very, very helpful. Uh, then in terms of the scholarship, we have young people who will come to Stellenbosch. Uh, Johan has been doing so well for our people who are coming from Nigeria. Uh, she has been doing so much to really see how they are here to get scholarship. But it has really not been easy. We have some very sharp young people that started at Stellenbosch but cannot complete because they didn't have enough school, I mean, enough uh, fees, enough money to pay their fees. So perhaps if we see that, we need to bring that up and begin to think of how do we help them to come up because they are the hope of Africa in the future. So, but uh, thank you so much for what we are doing so far. I would encourage Sunday to, to add on to what you are saying that the other uh, institutions like uh, Northwest University, Pretoria and Bloemfontein, they will find that the stream of students coming from other countries to their universities will grow considerably if there's uh, uh, accommodation available that are friendly for uh, foreign students. Um, uh, this house, uh, Vedenov House, made an enormous difference to not only uh, at the beginning to the Faculty of Theology, but now it is to the whole university. It's like a face uh, or, or, or a way of telling Africa and, and people from the East or South America, you are welcome, we, we welcome you. Um, just to add maybe to Frey, uh, to Sunday's remark, I think that, that applies, what Jachens is now saying, it applies to, I think, all our institutions. Um, many of our institutions in the NetAct um, network is offering also uh, master's and PhD uh, student and, um, programs now. And what uh, Sunday is saying is, is that I think a, a key I issue in raising um, scholarships is the research that you want to put out there. Um, if the, the titles and the, the research are very specific um, and it covers really the deep issues in, in, in Africa and the pan-African issues, um, that will, I think that will contribute to, to, to you giving, a, a procuring in a way scholarships. Um, I know that very, a lot of students wants to do very church specific research um, which is important, um, but from just my experience, it, it seems like people giving scholarships wants to look at broader issues which are impacting uh, the bigger society and not so much just specifically a church or a very small group within a society. So, um, so colleagues, when you, when you do work with research proposals and, and, and doctorate proposals, I would encourage you to look a little bit broader and, and really to try to address the big pan-African issues in your research proposals for students, it makes it easier to, to apply to bigger um, places for, 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 re for that specific research. Maybe one or two, maybe break it down into three different uh, PhDs, and not just one, but to cover all the topics or more topics and then present it as a bigger research proposal in, in that regard. Colleagues, anything else on that matter? Can we move on? Thank you. Um, then we move to 3.8 publications. Um, and I will start the chair, if that's OK. Um, you will see that we've got the, the studying congregations in Africa. That was one of the first publications that we worked on as, as the NET Act. Um, that was under the auspice uh, and the editorial pen of, um, of Jürgens himself, and many of you are using it and prescribing it in your schools uh, and in your in faculties. Um, we've managed now to procure that uh, rights of the book back to, uh, to, to, to Net Act. And thank you to Jürgens, he has given the rights of the, of the Studying Congregations in Africa book to Net Act. So now we are the owners of the rights for the book. And you will also see on the internet portal that um, Fraser has already put it up there, and it's now free. It's you can um, you can dis you can distribute it, you can prescribe it, uh, you they can download the PDF, you can copy it. Um, that's sort of the amazing um, 
amazingness of this book now. So thank you, Jürgens, uh, for, your, for your generosity in giving that to NetAct. We do, however, feel that it's, poss it is it's necessary now to write uh, maybe a study in congregations in Africa, volume two. So we will be starting to embark on a process of, we're not going to uh, do a rewrite of, of, of this book. So that's why we're putting this book up and it's there, it's available. It's, it's, we, we will be writing maybe a volume two. So I'm appealing now to the scholars, all of you who are working in congregational studies, and who in your faculties um, um, or faculty members who's got a specific interest in congregational studies, specifically practical theology and congregational studies. Would, and if you would like to help us on this project, we're going to put the project together now, um, uh, that you will please email me in, at, at my office, that you will email me uh, and or the, please ask the scholars to email me so that we can get a group together to start working on a, a working group together to start working on the volume two of studying congregations in Africa. That's the one thing. Then the second one is, is we are also, um, I've been contacted and asked by, by uh, Professor uh, Hannes Knutze for scholars who work specifically on missiology. Um, it seems that we need to start looking at how do we define missiology in Africa as well? So that's another project which we think we need to start embarking on. And Hannes is already with, working with a small team, but we would like to expand that team. Um, so he asked me to, if you specifically want you, your, all your uh, lecturers, scholars in missiology, please contact me or you can contact Hannes directly. Um, I don't think Hannes is in the meeting today. But um, you can contact me in the office and I will make sure that Anna gets that. The third um, topic of, of, of publication, which we are looking at at the moment, uh, but specifically more in a very practical way, is I've been asked by Barnabas Fund to look into agriculture. Um, agriculture as a sustainable part of theological institutions. Um, so all of the institutions who are working on agriculture, who is busy with agriculture, please, will you also correspond with me? I would like to get that information and like to start a, also a discussion group on, on the whole thing of the role of agriculture uh, linked with theological institutions, uh, linked with churches, um, and how we can get something going on that. So that's the three topics uh, which we are looking at. Is there any questions before I move to Langham? Uh, Joseph, you've got your question, your hands up. Joseph? Joseph Pauli, uh, okay. freestyle. Can, can you hear me? Yes, you can go ahead, please. Yes, I've heard you said that the book on studying congregations is available uh, as PDF. So yes. I can test it uh, because I, I'm going to use it in the second semester. I will I will send you a copy, but it's on the website. It's on the it's on the internet portal as well, Fraser. Oh, so yeah, okay. I'll, I'll I'll put the link in the chat just now, and then I'll make sure that it's um properly pointed to for everybody as well um, later on. Okay, so just uh, thank you. Watch, watch the chat box, uh, Joseph. Thank you. Email me again if you've got problems. Any thank you. other, anyone else on this? Jurgens, then we can move to Langham. Uh, Peter, yes, do you have uh, your hand up? Uh, sorry, Jurgens, just hold on. Just hold on. Peter's got his hand up. Just unmute there, Peter. Uh, Peter, you need to unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Silas, I see your hand as well. I'll give you a chance now. Peter, as I thank you, Peter. Okay, can you listen now? Okay, good. Um, that question, I uh, have two questions anyway. The first one is on the study, studying congregations in Africa. Are there books written in this respect that we can use in teaching uh, in our schools, seminars, especially seminaries? Yes. And how, can, how can they be available? 
if you look if you look now in the chat box yes the link for this book will be there it's for free you can use that book okay i'm living yes. in nigeria benue state you can use it it's, it's going to be in the chat box uh, or just email me or your fraser at the office okay i will do that second and my question? second yes my second question is uh is about agriculture how can it be affected in the in the uh, in the seminaries that's what we want to find out so i would like to start sort of a working group uh, among us as institutions on the whole yes. topic of agriculture with barnabas fund okay. so peter if you are interested in that please email me and just tell me agriculture i want to be part of that group okay i will thank you yeah, uh, Jergens, I see your hand. Colleagues, yes, if, you, um, if, I, if I miss you, please just shout out. I just want to say studying congregations is available in Nigeria uh, in book form published by or republished by the Presbyterian Church. Um, I see Olu Ndukwe and uh, you, Goldie College, isn't attending the uh, uh, AGM. I will take him up on that. Uh, but they have uh, the rights to, um, they, they are publishing it in, in Nigeria and you can buy it from them. But otherwise you can download it free of, staff, uh, free of uh, any cost uh, from the internet too. There, there okay. is a Portuguese version as well. Uh, clear if yes, you can yes. That, yeah. uh, the, both the links were posted just now in the chat box. Uh, Silas, I see your hand. Uh, and then also Thais. I'll come back I, to you now. No, yes, I Silas? Was yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Nico. I was interested on issues of agriculture, and I don't know if I'm preempting the question, but uh, when we're dealing with that, like we do agriculture, is the interest uh, those who are farming or to introduce even uh, programs of agriculture? I don't know. Like a teaching subject. I think I think we need to we need to get the conversation going. Is it is it farming? Is it teaching it? Uh, I think that's sort of it. Uh, how can it help us to be sustainable? Uh, so we need to look at that. Thais uh, and Lucas, I see your hand first. Then Sunday, I see you. Yes, I'm interested to comment on the uh, agriculture. Uh, what Justomar University is doing now and wanting to develop is to come up with a, a school of agriculture, not just a, a course amongst the theological programs, but uh, a school of agriculture training people uh, in areas of uh, agriculture, animal husbandry, aquaculture, forestry, and many others. So. This is our one of our major projects that we want to undertake. Uh, by the end of this year, we want that school to be registered as part of uh, the faculties of just of Okay, so I, I take it then um, that we can include uh, that you guys will be interested to help us in that conversation. Yes. Okay. Very much welcome. Thank you. That will help us. Sunday? I think another aspect of the agriculture is to encourage a new income stream for our institutions that will reduce you know, dependence. Most of our institutions right now depend on school fees. So if we can create another income stream that you know, focuses on agricultural farm produce and all of those things that we can sell and make money to decrease the dependence on uh, school fees. That is, that would be an excellent thing that we need to do. And plus, we are training people who are going to work with local people at the grass, grassroots. If they are not having that kind of vision of understanding of how to improve you know, uh, food security for the nation, food security for the communities, then we are not really meeting that need. The third thing is the African public theology is speaking to all issues 
agriculture is one of the critical issues that we need to also be addressing. So I think that Barnabas uh, uh, is going to help us to partnering with, uh, you know, Barnabas Fund will help us to move forward in that regard. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you I, may I just add to what Sunday had said that three of the four Angolan seminaries um, uh, is ex doing exactly that. Um, they uh, are feeding their students and lecturers from the farms that they are running. And um, Barnabas, Fund, uh, Barnabas Fund is going to help them to improve their methodology. The only problem now is that um, we are struggling to get there because of the uh, lockdown situation. But uh, Sunday is, co is, is correct. Uh, smaller and rural theological schools won't be able so to survive if they don't create income streams. And this is a very important one. Colleagues, some more discussion on that. I don't see hands. Uh, Godwin is good. Okay, that's just a thumbs up. Okay, colleagues, then we move Langham, Jurgens. Yes, um, Lang uh, uh, the wonderful news is that La Langham is now working on the French translation of African public theology, the Portuguese translation of African uh, Christian leadership is completed. The, uh, I'm uncertain whether when the book will be available, but it will be this year. Um, the challenge now is to get African um, uh, public theology also translated in Portuguese. But Langham is willing. It is uh, we are trying. We are sort of keeping our feet or our foot on the pedal to get that done as soon as possible. And, and the, I, I think we can just, as a board uh, chair, thank uh, Langham for their uh, wonderful support with these two books. And also, uh, new members take note that um, if you are a NetAC member, you can get uh, uh, 130, 120 pounds uh, worth of uh, theological books free of charge from Langham every year. You just have to fill in the application forms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you can go to their website. Uh, Sunday, I see your hand is raised. Is there someone else, which I don't see, um, Sunday? I, I think Langham is also asking us for another project. He's asking NetAct to come up with, up with another project because they have seen the African public theology is doing so <laughs> well, so well. So it means NEDAC, we have contribution to this continent and we, we want to take it from there. Now, let me tell us something that uh, the vice president of Nigeria said about that what we have done. He had to ask me whether we have a university in Nigeria that is doing systematic work like what we have done. He said, this is what they have been looking for. The church to be able to take what the government is doing, interpret it, bring theology to it, so that it has, a, you know, it has a solid foundation. <coughs> he was so happy. He was so happy. I sent a picture of that to uh, Yogan's WhatsApp, yeah. so that you yeah. can see him. He insisted that we must take that photo with him. Uh, he said, "This is what he has been looking forward to." So Langham right now is asking for another kind of contribution like that from NetArc. So whoever has a topic that would like to submit, submit that topic to us. We'll share it with Laham and see how we can now pull ourselves together to write another book that will help the continent. Thank you, Sunday. Uh, sorry, colleagues. Um, Okay, um, then uh, Gideon, uh, are you still in the meeting? We are moving to the journal and we've got the editor and the editor in chief, both of them are in the meeting, um, Sunday and Gideon. So um, 
Gideon. Thank you. Over to you. Thank, thank you, Nico. Can you hear? Yes, you can go ahead. We can hear you. No, I, I uh, just very briefly. Uh, 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 the, the second volume appeared uh, earlier today. Uh, uh, you can check it out on the portal. Um, we, we published eight articles and one book review. Um, for this uh, volume, we received a overwhelming number of articles to, to consider, to peer review. The big uh, problem was to find enough peer reviewers. Uh, it, remain, uh, it remains a challenge uh, because uh, we, we received about 40 articles. So you can imagine how I, need, I needed to, to find more than 80 peer reviewers and to get them all do the work in time was quite a challenge. But uh, I think the article is, uh, the, the journal is growing. Uh, it's vibrant. There's a lot of interest in it. And I think you must all now help us to, to market it, to make it known so that people can go and check it out. Um, and our next um, uh, edition will hopefully be in September this year. And in between, we plan to have some um, additional or, or uh, special editions on special topics. Thank you. Any uh, questions to Gideon? Gideon, we had one okay. question earlier from Godwin in terms of the... Um, not so much the accreditation, but the registration of the of the uh, the registration of the of the, of the uh, journal. The journal, uh, we 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 investigated the possibilities, but uh, the way we understand it, the journal must run for about three years and prove itself, and only then can you officially. Uh, apply to register. Uh, in the meantime, what we can do is to give a, a, a letter stating that the articles has been peer reviewed and we can really work out to build the academic quality of the journal. So, so, so it will be acceptable, but there's no shortcut to a registration. So we need we need the scholars we need all our colleagues around the table to we need to keep on writing and then also publishing and we will we will grow the uh, if I understand it correctly we will grow the journal into a well established recognized um, uh, journal in, in Africa. Jurgens, you could may may come in. Um... There was a, the Overseas Council uh, had a, what they called a virtual institute. Several of our brothers here and sisters were present at that, at the West African one that was for uh, four afternoons in April and dealt with um, res doing research that will be of benefit to the church and to local communities. It, it was a very good um, and uh, um, institute or training session or uh, discussion session on, on how to do uh, uh, the type of research that will make a difference on the ground where we are. Uh, yeah, one can even link it to being salt of the earth and, and light to the world. But uh, right through the four days and listening to all the discussions, I want to say that I think uh, our journal, this uh, African Theological Journal for Church and Society uh, is a very important tool because I am convinced that African, that the theology from Africa needs to add something to the global theological discussion that isn't there. 
there's something unique in Africa and in, in, in African scholars. And, uh, and you know, the type of theology that we grew up with, uh, grew up with uh, sort of came from Europe and was then messed up in America. And one can, uh, that's quite funny the ways of telling that, or, you know, joking with that. But if we struggle with our own issues, honestly, we will make a contribution to the world. And we must use this um, a periodical or journal to that effect. Uh, and, and, and my call will be, guys, let us write from our hearts. Let, let us put to paper the things that we uh, don't try to please the professor in Oxford or other professor in Washington State University or Yale or Harvard or wherever. Uh, do the sort of work that, that we know we must think about here and publish it in our journal and our journal will become a, a, a journal that will make a difference uh, in the continent and in the world. Thank you. Colleagues, if I can just um, ask also, we need peer reviewers. Um, uh, Gideon, I think that's the, our last conversation Sunday we had in our editorial board meeting. This is so if you as scholars uh, uh, in the various fields, please send an email either to Sunday or to Gideon. And please, we, we need a pool of peer reviewers that can work through the, um, um, that can work through the articles that we get um we need to send it back sometimes not for you to rework it it needs to come back again it's a very tedious process it's not just by having an uh the, tomorrow we have a journal it, it uh, and we are extremely thankful to to sunday and to gideon and to fraser for putting up this uh this journals as gideon has mentioned you know we had Fortical articles, we can only publish nine. So we need to send them back and you need to rework them or the, or the scholars need to rework them. So please email Gideon and Sunday um, and offer your services uh, as peer reviewers, uh, state your subject, uh, which you are interested in, the research which you are doing um, and help us with this process. That's how we're gonna, uh, that's how we will be building a credible, credible journal and which will become the place to publish in Africa. Uh, we are stand, setting high standards. And as Jürgens have mentioned as well, right with the purpose for Africa on the Pan-African issues, that's what we need to make a difference in uh, at this moment. Any questions, uh, remarks? Sunday, are you good? Gideon? Yes, I, I, want to, I want us to actually thank Gideon, because he is on top of all of this. Looking at his age, his devotion to this is so impressive. <laughs> so impressive. May I request that we get a younger person to work alongside him to train that person so that we'll have you know, this ongoing privilege of having this publication. It's a gift to the continent. And uh, let me use this time to announce that Langha has just published a book called God of the Remnant, the, the plight of the minorities in Africa. Uh, I want to ask Langha to give copies to all of our schools so that we will have access to that book. Thank you, that will help us tremendously. Thank you. Um, Chair, I can just say that I read that book and wrote something about it. And uh, uh, the, the author was Sunday Akan. He also wrote a book, uh, uh, no, no More Cheeks to Turn. And both these books are, to my mind, crucially important in our continent because it, it, it looks at our context from the point of view of minority groups and groups that are struggling to survive against hierarchies or bigger tribes and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, it, it, um, there isn't a, a single country that isn't confronted with that problem, mm -hmm. South Africa included. 
And the guidance in both those books are extremely, extremely um, uh, important and, and practical and, of course, theological too. So uh, I, I bought both of them for my personal library to have and to consult with. Thank you, Jens. Thank you, Gideon, for all your work. And also, please uh, give our thanks over to CLF, the Christian Literature Fund, down in Wellington, South Africa, who is helping us tremendously with the publication um, of the journal. They help us in, in many, many ways. I did send the link for the journal. Um, so you can just click on there. It's in the chat box. Uh, the publication volume number two, uh, volume two, number one, 2021. It is up there on the NETAC portal. You can go in that. And you please also, um, while we are putting it up here, you, see, you can print it. I know many of the colleges and institutions have got problems with connectivity and issues. You can download it and you can print it yourself and you can put it in your library and students can use it. Um, that's why we, we give a, a PDF version there as well, so that you can use it. It doesn't have to be read online. You can use it in your libraries. You can just print it yourself and it's available and ask the scholars to read it, students to quote it. That's why we have to enhance our academic busyness in our, in our institutions. Thank yeah, you, look, colleagues. Can I just second that and, and say, yes. that is why we are going, we're departing from the norm and pr producing a version which is the full issue. Normally with an academic journal, it would just be each article as a separate, um, um, as a separate article, and you can get each individual article, but we're also publishing the full issue so that you can just do one download and get a print version of the, whole, or a, a local version of the whole journal. Yep, thank you. Thank you, colleagues. We move on 3.9, Chair, if, if I may pursue, uh, pursue um, on we, and I will just um, uh, quickly re, um, give feedback. Um, we were thinking about the whole topic or the issue of curriculum. And um, Jefferson and I just had a short discussion this morning on curriculum. Um, curriculum is a very contextual thing, but we all, we are picking up everywhere that people, um, uh, all our institutions are battling and grappling at this moment with curriculum, specifically with changes in curriculum to online education and, and, and that. Um, uh, my suggestion would be, Chair, if we can get the approval from the board that we have a discussion on the EXCO, the Executive Committee, about this and come forward with a plan. We do not have at this moment a plan. Um, but that may be, in a way, we need to help our institutions with curriculum planning, curriculum issues. Not too sure how, we, but if we can just move this point back to the EXCO um, as part of our discussion this morning, that might, that we can sort of start a work group, maybe a work group on, on curriculum planning and curriculum issues. Um, would that be suitable with our colleagues? May I comment on that? I, I think, uh, uh, may I uh, uh, um, motivate it in, an, in another way? And that is, uh, in the beginning, in, in the early uh, 2000, the HIV problem was absolutely devastating. There was nothing taught at our theological schools, and NetAC started the training um, uh, with training programs and developing curriculum. And then um, Dr. Kruger de Prio, who is now translating um, English to Portuguese, wrote his doctoral work on curriculum and curriculum development. And he, at that stage, visited Kruger, I think it was 12 or 9 or 12 schools that he individually, 10, 10 schools that he individually uh, worked with them through their whole curriculum. He has, he has, you know, for doctoral degree, has all the theoretical background on how to do curriculum. He was teaching at the FC by etc. So he, he literally went from school to school and helped those schools to work through the curriculum and to apply the sort of thing 
uh, or help them to apply uh, the principles of developing contextual uh, teaching for your school and situation. And, and, uh, and, and that's always specific to a school and a place. And I think we must pursue something like that again. Uh, that's a, you know, a few guys who want to do uh, um, doctoral programs on that topic can, can uh, think about writing a research proposal for that. Thank you. Um, the conversation, colleagues, oh, sorry, can we, is that acceptable to all that we ask the exco to look at curriculum specifically and how we can assist one another? If I hear you know, no comments, then I take it as it's okay. Thank you. Right. Then, colleagues, the conversation with ACTI is still going on. Um, because of the travel restrictions, we could not, we had Zoom meetings with David. David is not in the meeting. I, um, they, ACTI is a, one of our members, but David is not in the meeting here. So the conversation with ACTI is ongoing and also with the South African universities. Um, I think part of curriculum is also more and more becoming an issue of um, uh, accreditation. Um, but we will keep you posted on that because what we what we see in, in many of our in many of our countries, uh, we see that there's now double accreditation. Uh, the countries, the specific countries want institutions to be accredited at their own accreditation institutions. Whilst we also have in Africa uh, ACTI as a partner to do accreditation. So it's a conversation that we need to engage in and we are all in that conversation and we will be looking uh, further into that. I will, I will report back on that as well. Uh, Imiola, I see that you've got your hand raised. Yes, just to remind the board that I serve as the chair of ACTI. And if there is any issue for follow-up for relationship with ACTI, I will be glad to communicate to David and other officers. Thank you very much for our collaboration together on the platform of ACTI with Next Act. That's just my comment. If there are issues or anything specifically you would like me to report, I'll be glad to do so. Thank you, thank you. Um, we, are, we will keep that conversation going. Um, I know that some of the uh, some of the institutions have mentioned also to me on, on terms of costing um, that accreditation is becoming a very expensive exercise, and specifically now with with uh, our student numbers down and all our institutions, many of our institutions finding themselves in very dire financial <laughs> situations, the whole issue of accreditation is 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 concerning. I would also like us to, we will, we will pursue that further. We are in conversation with that. Thank you, Imiola. We, 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 we hear from you as well. Um, and David and I, we are in conversation. Hopefully this year we will meet up and, and have this conversation in person. Uh, Nico appears to have dropped out. Somebody else can take over. Who dropped over? <laughs> you were you were silent for a while. Go on. Okay. Am I, am I back again? Can we yes. make a 15-minute break? Sorry, colleagues. A 15-minute break. Um, you can just mute, take a break, stand up, just walk around, get something to drink. Um, a bathroom break, 15 minutes. Uh, Chair, is that okay with you? Uh, and then we will reconvene in 15 minutes from now. Uh, Central Africa time, that will be 15.45. Well, well, well paced uh, time-wise. We are on target. <laughs> yeah. Good, Nico. Thank you, colleagues. 15 minutes break. 15 minutes break. Fraser, maybe you should just share your screen for a 15-minute break.